What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 321 of Opinions May Vary. I am your host, JR. I have my co-host with me, Alex. Hello. Hey, Alex. Hi. How are you? Long time. It's been exactly a week. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us this week in studio, I can't remember last time, but it's been a while, which is also weird to say because it hasn't, it's, it feels like it's never been a while when it's, when it's this guy because he's on so often. Right, Brett? Yeah, three, two, one, let's jam, guys. Oh, he did ah. the three, two, one thing. Yeah. Can we be buff? Heck yeah. Thank you. I've thank, never seen thank it. Thank you. Brett, thanks so much for coming on. Brett, you're like you're like a sub guest. This you're no, you're a, a guest host. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'm the humble. You're, you're not the guest. You're get because you're helping us because yes, essentially sir. you're the reason we we should be thanking you for um, the people we're going to be talking to today because you kind of introduced us to all of this. Uh, Alex, might, yeah. me, I don't know, whatever. Either yeah, way, it was both <laughs> waiting patiently uh, on Skype this week. Joining us are um, the one and only Frenchie and the Punk guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having Hello, us. <laughs> if you have heard any of our uh, multiple uh, Steampunk World's Fair reviews, Wicked Fair uh, conversations, um, what else? Brass Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there, there's countless. Now, was the, it Watch City last year? Did we talk about that on the show? I, I can't remember. I've been enough times where I'm sure I've talked about Watch City at right. in Waltham mm -hmm. like a few times yeah. on the show. We have had the pleasure of of seeing Frenchie and the Punk perform count between the three of us <laughs> dozens of times. And Numerous. Uh, they were kind enough way back, way back in the day when we were we were like, hey, we're gonna do video too. We'll give that a shot. I believe <laughs> I, I, I believe the two of you were our first ever uh interview. Possibly. Yeah. I, oh. I think it, I think it was. I do believe so. Um way, way back in the day when we gave that a shot. Um yep. You guys have always been super kind to us and let us, uh, you know, huddle around your table at shows. <laughs> but um, needless to say, very excited. Um, I don't even know where to start. I'm going to let someone take over for me. Brett, have at it. Brett, because <laughs> sure. I think you were the first to know about Frenchie and the Punk. How did you? Well, the uh, the reason being um, is one of the first steampunk events that I, that I ever went to. And, you, and I'm sure... Uh, uh, Samantha and Scott, I'm sure you guys can confirm too. I uh, once when I say this, you'll be like, "All oh, right, um, <laughs> that one." Back in the uh, uh, se when season two of New York Inc. came out, and uh, they, they had a steampunk episode. Uh -huh. Back oh, in oh right, the, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, Booster Street Social Club. That was the first time that I saw you, and uh, and it was one of those things where uh, there was an art show that was happening uh, that you know. The episode itself, like there was a steampunk party at the tattoo shop, and yeah. it was the Zombie <laughs> James yeah. uh, spinoff show and whatnot, and. Uh, and like every, uh, I had a bunch of artwork in the show. I actually designed the logo for the show. It was Mobilis and Mobileye um, at Wooster Street, yep. and uh, they they were like, "Brett, like we need a bunch of steampunk people. Can you you can bring as many friends as you want?" And I was like, "All mm -hmm. right, sweet." So I know exactly the people to bring, and Alex was one of those people. And we I didn't know what to expect, but obviously we saw a lot of our um, a lot of really cool people that we see on the regular now. And yeah, you yeah. you are the very first and and very much included in that in that uh, very cool <laughs> list. So, yeah, that's the yeah, first time we saw you. That was a while ago. I can't even remember. That, that might have been 2012, 13, yeah. you think? Yeah, I think it was yeah. 2012, six years ago. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you put that together, or was that a Bruce Rosenbaum event? Uh, that was a Bruce Rosenbaum event. So I worked with oh, Bruce what? on the project, yep. And okay. then, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I did, like, a couple things, but that was definitely his project that he worked with with the uh, with the Wooster Street guys. I think that's the first time we... Um, did a show in a tattoo. Bar. <laughs> Same here. No. <laughs> Has, is it is it the last time as well? <laughs> yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. After that tattoo that says M U M on my arm, I'm just kind yeah. of <laughs> well, and a unicorn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that was cool. Yeah, it was great. So that was the first time. You know, we've done a bunch of Bruce. Uh, those uh, Modvik kind of events. I think yeah. we did something mm -hmm. before that too. Yeah, I, one uh, of my favorites is that uh, his Bruce's old house in Sharon actually makes a cameo appearance in your in your v music video for House of Cards. Yes, that's right. yep. yeah. We filmed the whole thing there. Actually. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, we we did like two days of shooting it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. All in that house. That's some good. Some yeah. Red Fork people in that video too. So yeah, <laughs> yep. that was one of my that's one yep. of my favorite videos you guys have put out. Uh, I mean, I, I like all the new videos you guys come out as the albums come out too. So yeah, but that's uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, Samantha, uh, you directed that whole thing, the storyboard for it. And, yeah, yeah. And Frank Siciliano filmed it, and then I edited it. I did yeah. all the editing for that. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, <laughs> I think this is a good point to 
to get into like expanding a bit since uh it's it's just the two of you and as you said like well you know you did some editing too and, and directing on top of also you know singing recording the music and and performing and whatnot like how much of what you've done has to be like you know being a, a jack and, and jill of all trades because at some yeah. point you have to learn how to how to edit your own stuff <laughs> right right yeah. you know, we we have had people help us and stuff but we tend to do a lot of the work ourselves too i think it's that kind of old school diy punk rock ethos that just yeah because it seems like it's it's always rolling we're always doing something so for us i don't know i guess the way we operate it's just easier i just jump onto photoshop and design a flyer or i you know, I, I do some photos on there or, you know, I'm, I'm editing a video. Or we have to jump on something else and do it because by the time we find someone and ask them to do it and wait for it to be done, it's never, you know what I mean? It's, it's we, we move too fast, mm -hmm. I think, to um, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's like everything is in constant motion. Yeah. You know, it's like and don't it's head in, into a yeah. show and Samantha's working on a song in the van. We get to the show, we play the show, come back to the hotel, you get up and then it's like... Uh, we have an interview or we, we uh, oh, we got to, you know, do this photo shoot or we yeah. got to, you know, call the, the place that produces the, the, the CDs. It's, it's constant. constant. Yeah. yeah. While keeping social media updated. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's, well, a, yeah. there's a million things. It, it's just, it's, it's so crazy. It's, we're, we're being, we're in so many different departments <laughs> constantly in one day. <laughs> it's good because I oh, like yeah. hats. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Your closet must be very deep, sir. It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but well, on top of that too, because like the things that uh, that I'm more than happy to to chime in on is that like you also put out art books too. I mean, you <laughs> make your own artwork for the albums, and then uh, you also make your own merch on top of that. Like you produce your own merch, like you know, sewing of the uh, the the bats. The bat frogs. Yep. Exactly. The yeah. bat frogs. Yeah. Yep. Frogs. Yeah. The, our house is now basically Bat Frog HQ. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's a warehouse. It's yeah. not a house. Yeah. <laughs> Would you yeah, call so Scott does the, um, the artwork. He does the pen and ink drawings. And then I do the color. I bring the color in. And then we both work on design. And then we have um, stuff printed onto fabric. And then I, I cut and, and sew everything, like tea towels and um, patches and whatnot. And I also make um, finger puppet bats. And uh, now I'm designing my own fabrics, and yeah, it's, it's, it's we're like a, a two-person <laughs> art collective. It's it's an unbelievable <laughs> partnership that that just works and works and works and works. I and and I, I I am nervous to ask the boring question, but it's also something that's really interesting to me as well. Like, because I gotta say, like you know, we've talked about you guys in the past. Like you're you you know uh, the 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 performance duo, great shows. We've always kind of been like, oh my God, then, then we saw Frenchie and the Punk like four times this weekend and it was great. <laughs> um, I, I got it like, if we if we do a real quick, how did this come to be? How did this partnership that seems to work so well, it, like how did you guys find each other? What what was like the genesis of Frenchie and the Punk? Uh, it's kind of a funny long story. I'll say a little bit. Like basically Samantha and I met in New York City um, in 98. And we were both fueling our art and music careers by working at temp jobs. Yep. 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 So back then we worked at temp jobs. Um, I was a solo musician. Then I left the punk scene that I was in 13, 15 years before that. And I was just, you know, playing acoustic music and experimenting with different styles. Samantha was a visual artist. She did oil painting and sculpture. And um, she came into the office that I was working at as a temp. And I was a temp there too. <laughs> and I was her a boss i guess you could say for a little <laughs> while and um ba yeah basically so we met at that and we kind of hit it off and you know, the person i would have to talk to my, my boss would say so do we still need samantha on the job oh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> i i didn't want to my thing was that because i had been working in offices i i got a master's in business and i was like a whole business thing and i hated it all i'd ever wanted to do was be an artist and uh, there was a point where I was like, life is making no sense to me. So I dropped everything. I stopped everything. And I made a commitment to just do art. And that's why I turned to temp jobs. And my, my um, rule was I would never be somewhere for more than two weeks. I didn't want to wow. get used to being anywhere. Because <laughs> <Nice. laughs> I didn't want to work in offices. 
So I broke that rule when I went and tempt at uh, the company where years. Scott was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, yeah. yeah, it was a good bet. <laughs> yeah, it was. It worked out great. You know, we totally hit it off. And while we were there for the, the last year and a half, two years that we were there, um, we kind of planned this whole thing. Like if we're going to leave this creative life and do music and art full time, we just kind of, you know, all right, let's figure out what to do. So we ditched our apartment and we moved into my rehearsal studio, which I had in Manhattan. And that was in the music building. And it's a room with 12 floors, six rooms, each floor, all bands rehearsing 24, <laughs> seven, 365. So basically we would be blowing up a mattress every night and then putting it in a box in the morning. And there was just music playing everywhere. Like you said, 24, yeah. seven. And it was just a room with nothing in it. It was just a drum kit. Yeah. And um, and I rented it out to mostly hardcore bands like Sick of It All, Agnostic Front. <laughs> nice. Ad Balls, all like raging hardcore stuff. So, you know, that's where we live. We ditch the apartment and we didn't have to pay rent because, you know, I was renting out to bands that were rehearsing there. So we'd go to work during the day at the temp job, come back, uh, let the bands in and we'd have to be in New York. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah, we sit in cafes. Sit in cafes. And there was no, there was... We actually um, we got a um, we had to go to the parks and recreation gym to even take showers because there was nothing there. So, yeah, it's just <laughs> rehearsal studios and yeah. the, and rehearsal studios and the bathrooms on the floor were the scuzziest oh, bathrooms, <laughs> like like giant cockroaches all over the place. <laughs> no, I when, it. when we slept in there, like you, you could mice would run over our sleeping bags. Yeah, yeah, pretty intense. Uh oh! I, I, did they hang up? I think they hung up. Well, no, no, no. I think we're we are. I think the three of us are. I mean, at least I I can only speak for myself. But like, legitimately slack jawed. Like <laughs> it's it's you couldn't you can't hear. It, but there's been a chorus of huh. <laughs> it's just it's because it's one of those things that clearly you guys had to endure a lot. But yes. the fact that because it would have been very easy to just say. I don't want to do this anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and just yeah. give up, which is uh, sadly what I, I imagine a lot of aspiring artists and creators do once you like w when stuff gets tough, but it shows that, you know, <laughs> I mean, clearly you guys have, have, have progressed and, and now we you know, that the things that you're still creating to this day, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like it's, <laughs> that's such a, that's a crazy story. Yeah. Quite a quite a journey because that I mean obviously we were so dedicated to to doing art and music full time that we were ready to do as much as we could to make that happen. Mm -hmm. I mean even prior to what we're talking about, even prior to me um, meeting Scott, I lived in a warehouse for five years, um, and that was part of my dedication to doing art. I just I ditched um, a part another apartment. And just uh, lived in a warehouse that was you know, sort of a work, no living kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So I had a studio space. We there were 12 artists. We built our own sections, our own walls. And um, it was great. I mean, it was amazing. I could be doing art every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got found out, so we got kicked out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> at that time, I guess we had already met. Yep. I guess the last six months or so is when, when we met. So and everything went fast forward from there, and even when we started touring together, because um, this all happened in '98, when we started touring together in 2005, I mean we were sleeping in the van, we were doing whatever we could to make ends meet, to to make it happen, yeah. and yeah, so it, it's been quite a process. We don't sleep in our van anymore. <laughs> awesome, that's nice. <laughs> I'm really happy to say. <laughs> Graduated the hotels. Yeah. Yes. That's good. It, it took us about seven years after we met to actually do music together. Yeah. Too. It was kind yeah. of weird. You know, from 98 to 2005, I was doing the soul shows and Samantha was kind of doing the booth and the art and booking shows and doing lighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. And basically, Samantha jumped on stage one night in Connecticut um, in like, yeah, in 2005. 2005 there was a tambourine yeah. on stage and she started playing all this cool you know what was what you the well, song you liked yeah it was um because his solo project was called um scott helen and the traveling band of gypsy nomads <laughs> because it was sort of a play on the fact that he he's layering the guitars um yeah so that it's there's more people <laughs> and he had a song called the traveling band of gypsy nomads and that was my favorite song and um i'd had a couple glasses of wine <laughs> and <laughs> 
so we started playing that song and I just and okay I have to preface this also with I have a an ex, kind of an extensive dance background I started dance when I was like four years old and I, I did dance well into my 20s so I was very used to being on stage um, you know ballet modern jazz you know I did all that stuff and I had been away from performing dance for a number of years when we met so basically that night I just you know went right into it and just picked <laughs> up a tambourine like you said that was on the side of the stage and um and yeah. I had you know I had been doing the soul stuff and she had these really cool accents for the tambourine you know people kind of make fun of the tambourine sometimes but it's there's you can there's an art to playing it and yeah. so as soon as I heard that I was kind of like oh wow I don't want to do solo we should do a <laughs> duo <laughs> And you know, so we started writing it's like, tunes. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to drink wine a lot now. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can write it off as a business business expense, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> While we're here, since you mentioned the uh, the guitar and the layering and stuff, I want to tr- like put Jr. on the spot because he's. I want to say he's like our our guitar guy. I mean, oh, cool! Out, out of the three of us, I believe he's he's the one who like knows the most. There, there was a time in high school when I played in a band that played almost exclusive Green Day covers, so I know a little bit about guitar. Um, but like, we, we'd be watching one of your shows, and 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 Scott would start doing the pedal stuff, and there's just like layer after layer, and I'm like, what? I don't even know what's happening. Where are these sounds coming from? <laughs> And uh, and I think Jared's quote at the time was like, "I thought I knew how to use a pedal, but <laughs> I don't." And then, like that's I also and I had a because it was one of the first times I saw like a, a loop pedal in action was first year at World's Fair when because uh, uh, you guys uh, used the loop pedal. Um, Unwoman two, had a really good and, one. yeah, and Unwoman yes. is using it as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, a couple years like two years ago, a friend of mine saw Ed Sheeran in concert. Ed Sheeran is like, oh well, yeah, yeah. He's yep. sliced bread nowadays. He's <laughs> the biggest thing in the. I mean, I'm a sucker for his music too. The thing is, he when he performs live, it's just him. Like I've seen him play with a band once, and that was on mm. SNL. But oh. like other than that, it's just him. Mm. So he uses a loop pedal a lot. And the, my yep. friend was explaining the live show to me, and like, and like, oh, he has this loop pedal. And let me tell you about the loop pedal. <laughs> and she starts going like, and then he hits the pedal, and it plays this. And I was like. I know what a loop pedal is <laughs> because I've seen people who, and I'm like, I did nothing on Ed Sheeran. I like Ed Sheeran, but I've seen people use it to an even like further extent that he does. And it's mm. like, <laughs> I got a little high and mighty. And I was like, <laughs> I've seen loop pedals in action and you don't even know what I've seen. <laughs> you come out to um, the steampunk shows and we'll show you someone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's pretty um, like the sound that the two of you are able to create just from the two of you because it sounds yeah. like there's an entire band behind you guys mm-hmm. and it's it's and like watching the song get built is one of my mm-hmm. favorite parts because like just yeah, it, it's hard to explain but like how did that come to, to like to fruition like when you guys were like this is the this is the the route we're gonna take it's it was kind of a, an organic process you know i got the loop pedal maybe 12 years ago and just been experimenting over and over and shows just little by little you know building a layer seeing what works i don't like to have too many layers cuz i don't want a, like an ocean of <laughs> an ocean of mud yeah you know yeah. it can be too much you know like kind of a jam kind of thing i'd like to keep it pretty organic and natural actually but, that's what i love about the way he uses the loop pedal because he's using it it's not like, hey, I have a loop pedal. Look what I can do with the pedal. You know what I mean? It's like it's pretty subtle. I mean, if you, it, it just it's, it enhances the song so much, and it's so cool the way he he builds it, but without it being like this is about the loop pedal. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's I guess yeah. I'll in my my layman's terms, it's like there's music happening, and he made more music, <laughs> but at no point has there been too much music. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, and then I, I just rocks. broke Brett with that one. <laughs> yeah, was, the, to, not to make a pun, but that was pitch perfect. That was a pitch perfect joke. Right. There it is. <laughs> with apologies, that's that's for you, Babs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and even then, once you got like uh, when you have your drum set up, and like I could never tell when because uh, you'll have your 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 tambourine and you'll s- start slapping your cymbals too, and uh, and I'm like, was that? <laughs> Is, is this just filling in or is this part of the song? I can't right, tell right. anymore. <laughs> and as yeah, Jerry said, it's, it I, still I, sounds good. 
when we play, we, it, you know, it is really, we just kind of try to fill in all the parts, you know, I, you know, the guitar stuff and looping I do, and I kind of have a kick drum on my side. And then Samantha has a lot of the high end parts with all the, the tambourine and the other kind of shaker percussion, hi hat and cymbals. So it kind of balances out. So it is like a, a band mm-hmm. mm. or a trio maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, when Scott was doing solo stuff before we played together, he was before he he was using the loop pedal. He was always layering guitars. Yeah. Right? I mean, he'd been doing that for quite a while. You know, because, yeah. you know, I grew up in the playing the punk scene. I really got into the, mm-hmm. the metal thing. So I like that layering of guitars, a lot of, you know, metal bands and punk bands, too, when they have two guitars that, you know, even like the Cure, when they layer um, they have two guitars or a guitar and a keyboard. Mm-hmm. I like that, you know, the, the dual melodies happening at the same time and that working together. So before I even knew about loop pedals or before they're out, I played along with a little tiny CD player that I'd put a backing track on. And then I switched to a DAT player, or maybe it was a DAT player first, then a CD player. Then I switched to an MP3, uh, you know, you know, little iP- iPod or something for the second track. Mm-hmm. And then I found the loop pedal and like, okay, cool, I can do this live because I always kind of didn't really want to. I, I wasn't really <laughs> comfortable playing with a backing track. Yeah, you know, and I and I write usually write songs for two parts on the guitar, so that's kind of how it's evolved. Is it tough to get the the timing down with that? Uh, it can be. Um, I, I have it down pretty well now, but there was definitely times in the early on that was like, wow. Because if you're <laughs> off, just off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah. probably pretty evident. Because I don't think I've ever seen like a like an incident like a oh yeah I'm, let me uh let me restart that one <laughs> like uh um, yeah sometimes you know it's pedals it's electronic sometimes they do weird stuff on their own even if you don't stop or start it in the right spot right like, right you know, yeah. It's it it can definitely be tricky, but you know it's just uh, you know it comes with lots of time and practice and shows. Yeah, I mean we do like almost like a hundred shows a year. We've been doing that for thirteen years. He's had a lot of time on that <laughs> on those loop pedals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of hours. Actually, that's that, that's a weird question. I don't know. I don't know if you get this a lot, but like because of all the shows you do, like are there any like specific shows? Not to ask you like which is your favorite because. That's I know that's just kind of a, a horrible question to ask, but <laughs> but like, are there any like major like staple shows during your year that you really look forward to from, like, or are you kind of just or are, are you really that uh, all over the place that you just kind of go from specific event to specific event? There are um, some really special events like we do. We we've been doing this uh, fairy festival out in Pennsylvania called the Spoutwood Fairy May Day Fairy Festival. Mm-hmm. It was the longest running first fairy festival in the U.S. Twenty seven mm-hmm. years. It just ended this year. Yeah, it's oh, heartbreaking. Wow. It, yeah. it was a great event for us. People were super cool. Great crowds. You know, fifteen, sixteen thousand people over the weekend. That was. <laughs> really special show yeah. you know, lots of different kinds of music fans and great bands that would play there mm-hmm. that was one of our favorite ones actually i have to say that that is that was probably my favorite um festival to play because it was just so such a heart-centered um festival for me mm-hmm. and That's awesome. it actually it ended because it got too big <laughs> wow yeah which is not a usual thing because it's yeah. usually the opposite but it was it was just too much. The land, like for the grounds and and the city just couldn't deal with it anymore. Huh. But uh, you know, like you know, Dragon Con is great. That's a great event. Yeah, We've right. done that a bunch of times. But you know, some years are tougher than others. You know, because mm-hmm. it's just so many people getting around. It can make it a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, the Asylum in England has been a great festival. That's a steampunk event in um, Lincoln, England. That's been awesome, nice. but we've played like we played a little show in Paris on the on a boat on the River Seine. <laughs> Oh. And I mean, and that was, that just, was pretty uh, cool. That was pretty cool. It was like a small <laughs> show. Maybe there was 30 people at it, but it was awesome. Yeah. You know, it's just like, so it's, yeah. It's... I think the with what we do, the kind of music that we do, we're so adaptable to different um, venues. I think we're really lucky that way because we can do a small venue and a, a small like a cabaret. Kind yeah, of like a cabaret mm-hmm. kind of, and then we can do large stages. So we get to do so many types of events that nothing really gets, um, uh, how should I say, like, I don't, it's not this feeling of like, oh, we're always doing the same things. <laughs> we're not, it's yeah. always changing. We're yeah. always in a different kind of situation. So 
that that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To to follow up on that, do you notice a big difference in the fans that come to your shows or like the the attendance and you know what kind of people are there? And then do you also uh, do you tailor like what songs you'll play for different venues or different shows depending on where you are? Like, do you, do you get like a different read off the crowd and go, oh, maybe we won't do Dark Carnival here? Like, <laughs> we're definitely doing Dark Carnival here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, we do pretty much. I mean, it, you know, each show there are kind of different groups of people in different areas too around the country. Obviously, you know, we play for a lot of the you know kind of alternative community, with you know which encompasses the cabaret and steampunk and punk or goth or you know kind of indie stuff um what's the second part of the question (laughs) yeah i think we do i don't know it's 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 definitely i feel like we already know um because we're so familiar with what we do that we we know when we go to an event like basically what we want to play yeah yeah you know and then sometimes people will scream out you know (laughs) play us some french or play (laughs) don't feed the rap you know, I, I've been that person, unfortunately, when you, when you played that summer show at the at the amusement park and uh, and I literally just shouted out, play Dark Carnival. And you're like, yes, on this lovely sp- on this lovely, warm summer day without a cloud in the sky, we will play Dark Carnival. And I'm, so that was on me. Yeah, funny Because there are some songs that feel like night songs and there's songs yeah. that are more, like appropriate for like daytime stuff for sure. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have some songs on a new record that obviously isn't out yet. That like, huh, is this a nighttime song or daytime? Is it, is it, is it, you know? Yeah. I think Dark Carnival used to feel like a, a only a nighttime song, but we've, you know, brought it out at daytime shows and it's yeah. cool too. Yeah, we'll yeah. do it at a daytime festival. Like something like Oh Jocelyn, which is the tower reading song. It's pretty. It's like a story, so it's pretty wordy. Mm-hmm. So it's it's it might not be something we would do in like a like a big open air okay. festival kind yeah. of thing because it's not really like you kind of need to be paying attention to the lyrics, mm-hmm. you know. So we wouldn't do it at some place where people are just jumping around. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what I mean, like yeah. dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think I think it's one of the things like especially we I think we over the years we've most frequently seen you play at like at maximum during world's fair. And I think one of yeah. the things that I really like is that like, whenever we see your stuff on stage, we, we kind of get a gauge on what gear you have and be like, Oh, okay. So there's going to be a lot of <laughs> elephant uproar in this show. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, when the drums are all, the, mm-hmm. our drum cannons are set up. Right. Yeah. Because yep. we don't always do drums too. And like smaller, smaller events. True. Or, yeah, yeah. We won't do drums. That's a big difference from yeah. uh, like the cafe kind of thing. We obviously can't you yeah. know, bring drums. Because it would just like pound people's heads off, <laughs> which is fun too. But <laughs> yeah, that was one thing that um, going into my first year at World's Fair, I was getting like the rundown from mm-hmm. from uh, Brett and Alex about you know what I can expect, and because I was completely out of my element up until then, I had only been to uh, comic book conventions. I had never been to a show like World's Fair, and uh, I, I Alex was telling me like, yeah, there's Frenchie and the Punk. They play these songs like this, and then like there's also uh, the, sometimes they do a drum routine where they play drums, and I'm like, <laughs> I've heard drums, <laughs> so who cares? And then the drums start happening, and I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then because like, not only is it like it's it's a rad part that kind of like it breaks up the set, and it's like I didn't I wasn't expecting that, and then it's also because drums, l- while they may look easy. Mm-hmm. To the, someone who doesn't, and I have uh, terrible rhythm. I've tried to play drums before, and it it does. I can't do the pedal. Can't do pedals in my hands. I can't <laughs> do it at the same time. And uh, drums are very difficult. And yeah. you guys manage to like your first. Like your backs are to each other, <laughs> so it's like you're yeah. just going off of uh, timing, rhythm, sound. Like it's not. There's hardly any visual cues to go by because you, you're not looking at each other, and it's it's. It's great. And like, there's not just like, oh, they're doing the one drum song. It's like, <laughs> oh, sh-. like, I remember last year, I don't remember last year at World's Fair, which I think is my favorite set that you guys have ever done. You guys brought the, if you'll excuse my language, you guys brought the damn house down. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was great. Um, awesome. Cool. And I think there was like an extended, like, you guys played a, a good amount of drums, and I don't recall having heard most of it, I believe. Because, <laughs> I know the main one that I've heard a couple like there's because there's rock paper scissors. Is mm-hmm. there like a different one that you guys have, or was that just kind of something that you guys were working on? 
Um, we we have a uh, we probably have about six or seven written drum tunes. I am that we uneducated. Do. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the Elephant Uproar CD: Rock, Paper, Scissors, The Blacksmith, Chase, uh, Carnival, Carnival yeah. Orient Express. Did you read that? Orient Express. Yeah. Yep. Well, we kind of switch it out. This is um, what we call the Frog Jam that we do, which is an, on any CD or anything. It's just this <laughs> cool, like oh, weird yeah. um, sonic thing that scott does with his guitar and it's kind of like this yeah it's kind of like a jam that we do before we do the choreographed drums but mm -hmm. i loop that and then we i put the guitar down while that's been recorded and looped and then we switch to like a drum pad and we switch to drums and we'll do something like you know rock paper scissors or orange express and... yeah now the drumming is um it, i i lived in brazil when i was a kid for a year and i got obsessed with drumming mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was convinced that I was going to grow up and be part of the samba school. And oh, my career um, would be in the carnival in Rio. <laughs> so, oh, you know, when people, what did you want to do when you were a little, you know, what did you want to do to, when you grow up? It's like, I wanted to be in the samba school and be in the carnival. So I always had that, like, obsession with That's drums. Cool. Mm -hmm. And plus, like I said before, you know, I was very involved in dance. So rhythm has been, it's just been in my blood all my life. And then Scott, play, you played drums when you were a kid. Right? Yeah, my, 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 my story with drums might not be as cool as that. So <laughs> I, had, I had an older brother that played in a metal band, and they were a trio. And back then, there was, wasn't even that many bands doing the, the speed metal motorhead kind of thing. Hmm. This was in like 1980. And uh, they would play, rehearse in the basement. I'd kind of sit there and watch them. I was probably 12 or something. I don't know how old I was, but I'd watch them play. And then they'd go off and, you know, smoke bags of pot. <laughs> and while they, when they left, I would go on the drums and just kind of mimic what I saw the drummer doing. Hmm. And that's kind of how I learned, just trying to, you know, hound out blasting filthy animal tailor motorhead drum riffs you know? <laughs> so, you know so you put that together you put the rio carnival of rio together with what he just said yeah. <laughs> in the punk elephant art board type stuff yeah. <laughs> rio motorhead combo that sounds brilliant right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Samantha, Samantha has the flare from the brazilian flare and i'm just yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> samba to blast beats is a visual i will never get out of my head now <laughs> And also, the reason we're back to back, we didn't even really plan that, is because when we first started rehearsing together, we were in a small space and we didn't have enough room <laughs> to have it like set up in any other way. So we had to be back to back. Right. And then we just kind of kept, kept it, it that yeah. way because that's what we had, you know, rehearsed yeah. and, and we were used to. So it wasn't even something we really planned. And luckily, we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> As... Eyes in the back of our heads. <laughs> As we've been talking so far, there have been at least four or five times where the three of us have looked at each other because, like, we've, as Brett said, like, we've been seeing you perform and, like, we've known about you and seen your shows for the past five to six, seven or so years. And, like, I, you know... Before this, I was like, I, I kind of know. I know French and the Punk. I, I have a pretty good idea. But, like, the more you talk, the more I'm learning more. It's like, oh, right, Rio. Okay. And, and it's like, <laughs> and, oh, I, I danced for 20 years. It's like, and, you know, each time we're just going, what? <laughs> There's more? And, and Samantha was in a hip-hop troupe in Boston. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, when I lived in Boston... <laughs> I, um, yeah. We got more for you. <laughs> <laughs> I loved hip hop. Yeah, that was really fun. That you should really do it. You should back. do a talk show. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, back, back when I was on the Titanic, I brought the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Was that the, well? Actually, one of the cool things that I always like bring up to uh, to, to you guys because I'm from Northampton, and mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of the rest of their trio are not. But I always like uh, dropping that. I always love s stopping by Platypus Records in East Hampton to see your entire like solo discography at Platypus <laughs> Records is still uh, still there, uh, shown proudly. <laughs> really, that's funny. Huh? Oh yeah, yep. Sounds like that they know what's up. Push Records is was um, it used to be in Westfield, Mass, where I grew up, and that guy was great. I mean, he had so many, you know, that kind of was part of my musical evolution, going in there and finding different records, and you know, like I'd walk in and be like, "Hey, Scott, the new Ramones record is out tomorrow." Of course, <laughs> I'd be back, 
there, you know. <laughs> so that's cool. That's cool that he, he has that stuff there. That guy's super cool. Oh, yeah. Record stores. Whew. Right. <laughs> so, so while Scott was doing that and going to record stores in Westfield, Mass., I was a little uh, little girl in, in England, even though I was born in France. Mm-hmm. I, I actually grew up in England, um, and I was doing, you know, ballet and all that kind of stuff while he was rocking out on, on punk rock in yeah. Westfield, Mass. That's amazing. <laughs> so your songs, your variety of songs, like the best description, you know, we could give it is that it's, it's cabaret music. But, you know, if I were to randomly choose five or six different songs, they're all portrayed in individual ways because there's mm-hmm. some where uh you're you're singing in french or you're singing like one kind of way and a different one is more of like you said it's, it's storytelling and then there's ones really like where you're kind of like almost purring between words the 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 song make out where there's yeah. where there's parts about you know behind the old, old red truck and like yeah. you don't just let the word end it's like it's it ends almost in a purr um oh Scott that does that really the, the, what do you do Oh, that's in Strangers After Midnight. Oh, that's in right? Strangers yeah. After Midnight. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sorry. I think he's Go talking. Ahead. I think that's all Samantha there. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. You know, and, oh, actually, that song, Make Out, yeah. is all about us at the, um, there was no red truck, but because um, we, we sort of had a clandestine, you know, affair at our at that office. Temp job. The temp job, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a, inspired by that. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So um, <laughs> what what led you to to you know, come up with all these different ways to, to vocalize your songs. Like, uh, I know it's not like an easy question. It's, it's really broad and wide open, but yeah. it's, I just find it so interesting that it's like, you know, they're n- on one disc, like they're not going to be the same. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, uh, talk, you know, just knowing Samantha and like what stories she told, would tell me about her family. Like she she had the kind of family that they would be driving around France or England and they would like sing like, you know, her dad would sing like Simon and Garfunkel in the car. Oh, we were, yeah, know, great we were all songwriters, singing, yeah. or, or like great, you know, some cool French music. Her mom's in the French cabaret and stuff. Yeah, I think you know, you, you she got a lot of a wide variety of influence in vocal department. Yeah, you know? definitely. I mean, my mom loved to sing. She used to sing a lot of Edith Piaf, and um, and my dad plays guitar and and banjo. He's a he's a British guy who plays banjo. Imagine that. <laughs> and, <laughs> And yeah, so there was a lot of jazz in my house, and there was a lot of Edith Piaf, like I said, and and um, yeah, a lot of folk music. In my, we, we used to, like Scott said, we used to sing a lot in the car because we were in the car a lot when we were traveling um, between you know family members in France and England. And um, so I actually, I don't even think if it's it's not really conscious what you're talking about with like, I'm having like a it sounds different from mm-hmm. song to song. I don't even know if I was really conscious of that. I mean, it's it's kind of like what the song um, asks, for. asks for, yeah. Because there's a different mood to the song. So we are so eclectic. I mean, we're not doing one style in a way. I mean, there's a, there's a common thread in all of it, and I think there's a real spiritedness and the and there's there's like this what Scott is is um, writing with his guitar is like I always say like he's like almost channeling for me. He just it's coming from this amazing place. And so I, they are very different in style, one from the other. And I think I'm just kind of following what it needs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, if I come up with a riff, you know, I'm playing the, that main riff in Dark Carnal, that kind of dun da 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 you know, that kind of groove. That's going to be totally different than the riff I came up with when I played Train, which was actually, right. at, we wrote that in a hotel in Kansas. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just played that riff, and I think Samantha's like, keep on playing that, because it reminded her of a train, right? Right, yeah. You know, he just, like, he <clears throat> basically just picked up the guitar and just started doing that riff. And it really, literally just sounded like a train to me. So, and I just, we just wrote it right then and there. Yeah. I think the songs or riffs have um, lyrics and vocal styles attached to yeah, them. Yeah. Mystically. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're, we're picking things out of the air, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's... Um, like I can tell when he's playing a riff, I can tell if there are lyrics attached or not. <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, there's there's some attached to that one. Keep going, keep right. keep playing, yeah. And so then then they come through. You know, then I hear them. So then you know I gotta write quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's just like how Michelangelo can can see the statue in the, the in block the of yeah. 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 In the block. Yeah, <laughs> it's already there. Just gotta let it out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right, exactly. Right. You know, it really it is like the, everything already exists in those things. Like when I paint, like I'll just look at it, just staring at a blank canvas, and then I start to, and I literally just sit there and stare, <laughs> and things start to come. I can see things on the canvas, mm. and then I start to paint. You know what I mean? Like I, it's like it's telling me. Like, I'm sure you you do that, Brett. Oh yes, okay. it, yep. Like yeah. as you're as you're literally explaining it, I'm just nodding my head, trying not to <laughs> bounce my nose off of the microphone in front of me. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. It, it's amazing the process. The creative process is like such a mystical kind of beautiful thing because it's. You got to put yourself aside in a way. Yeah, I'm sure you guys with this with this podcast have lots of artists and creative people who listen. So when they listen to this, they're going to be mm-hmm. nodding their heads along. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of times when you when you approach stuff like that creatively, you, you, the words like uh, like instinct and uh, um, intuition or or vi- like visualization paired with like um, an energy, I think those yeah. things also definitely like are just those are like little dials of volume dials in your mm-hmm. head that you kind of turn up and down at, at will to match whatever you want to put on the canvas or create in some instances. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I like, I like that analogy. They're like, too. they're <laughs> like gifts. Like I remember like there's a song that I think, I think it's on Hey Hey Cabaret. It's called Le Chat Noir. Mm-hmm. It's um, an old French tune. Yeah. And I li- I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning, like suddenly with this entire song in my head, I had to run to the other room and just write it down. <laughs> yep. It's just, it's all there and it, if i hadn't written it down in that moment and if it hadn't woken me up that would have been gone forever there's Ooh. no way you know oh I yeah remember yeah while we're here about writing stuff down making music i want to segue into your kickstarter yes and yes. for for your for your new disc for the songs on that like is it stuff that you've already written and had developed and are there ever points where you're like well we we have to make a new song we have to come up with something or you know over time as you've been saying gradually it's like well you know scott's playing something and i find the words for it is is it more of one than the other i guess it's a little bit of both maybe i'm I'm always playing guitar you know even if we're on on the road and we stop at a rest area and for a little while just to take a break i take out the guitar and you know come up with riffs or just record them into my phone um so yeah, they're it's they're all kind of flowing, and you know, I think for this record we we kind of did a, a lot of writing, you know, just as we were thinking about doing it. We've been wanting to put out a French and punk record for a while. We, the last one, Bonjour Batfrog, came out in 2014, and we started writing songs, you know, after that, but they didn't really, they don't, they didn't sound very French and punk actually. Uh, they had a little bit more of an almost kind of indie rock, indie pop feel. So we basically mm-hmm. wrote a whole record like that. And we we're like, well, this is cool, but it's not French it's not in the punk, punk, which was kind of weird. Yeah. So we have a whole other record that we, we'd like to maybe release, maybe we'll do it as like a Kickstarter add-on or something that we'd like to do. And so we did that and, you know, we recorded a bunch of those or they're, you know, pre-production at home. And, um, and then you know, since then, French and punk uh, songs started happening. I know it sounds kind of weird, but that's just how it works. You know, you write a song and like, hmm, this isn't really French and punk material. This is something different. Or then we'll come up with another song like, this is French and punk. <laughs> or I'll write a riff and Samantha's like, there's no lyrics in there. This is this is something <laughs> that I'll use for my solo guitar me of one stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's weird because those other songs that were coming through, they were coming through very strongly. And we were trying to put them aside and, you know, because we really wanted to do the French and the Punk record, a new record. But we're so busy. We're always running around and doing shows and on the road. And these other songs just, they wouldn't budge. And I think once we actually worked on them, arranged them, and did um, some just very, you know, crude kind of um, like demo kind of stuff at home, then it's like, okay... Now you can do French in the Pump. Now they started to come through. So it's almost like we had to honor those other ones first. It was, mm-hmm. I know that sounds weird maybe, but if we had to to allow, something wasn't letting us go to the French in the Punk thing. Mm. I don't know why. So then when we did that, you know, like Scott said, we have the French in the Punk songs come through. And what he was saying about maybe incorporating into the Kickstarter because we're, we're, we're getting closer and closer um, to the end of the Kickstarter and to the, to the goal. 
we're wondering if it might be a fun stretch goal to actually do to try and record some of these other tunes too. Mm. I don't know. So that's kind of a thing where we're sort of toying with that idea. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. With I, the I even... with the Kickstarter, <laughs> there are. What like... was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was. I yeah, mean, oh, no. that question took a uh, it, it like evolved into a beautiful uh, like uh, I'm not, I don't know how to describe it but um, Kickstarter uh, currently has 12 days to go hopefully you're listening to this within the next 12 days so you can go take a look <laughs> we are no strangers to uh, kind of um, I don't know the word I don't want to say the word I was gonna say uh, kind of plugging uh, you know Kickstarters and stuff we love to see people signal are, boosting yeah yeah that's yeah. a better word than the one I was gonna use <laughs> and it's 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 always a lot of fun to see people who want to create something be able to create that thing you guys have had multiple successful Kickstarters in the past um, yeah mm-hmm. that is great is it it allows um, us to put it kind of out there for people to pre-order and that really helps us to get the recording done. Um, so we have a lot of fun rewards on there. We even have uh, an artist friend of ours who's, who's making a stained glass bat frog. Mm. She's an amazing stained glass artist. And we gave her, um, you know, like a, one of Scott's drawings of a bat frog. And so it's inspired by that. And so that's like one of the cool things that we have there. And then we have a lot of our, our own artwork and, and stuff that we, that we make. You guys um, had us um, giving us all... Uh, the shifty eyes at each other a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we were all very suspicious of each other and accusing. <laughs> accusations were flying because <laughs> one of the rewards, uh, or one of the the, the uh, incentives or whatever you want to call it for the Kickstarter, was a uh, custom, I believe, one of a kind. The 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 cane by Canes and Abel. Yes. 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 And we are, we're all big fans of, of Professor uh, Mark P. Donnelly and Keynes and Abel. We each have, I think, between the two Be- of us. Between uh, the three of us. The three of us, we have... We have five? Five, I think. About a half oh, dozen, half probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> Brett has a couple of canes. He also has the sh- uh, the, uh, the cudgel. Uh, yeah, tr- um, like a truncheon type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're just your average truncheon. <laughs> no, just, <laughs> just casually float that out there. <laughs> so when we saw that it was one of the... Uh, I remember it popped up on... The Facebook, I think, is where I saw it. I tagged you guys in it. Yeah. yeah. And then Alex, and uh, the next day was and like, like within two days. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> it's okay, gone. Someone bought it. <laughs> who, who did it? <laughs> Which it's one? Is... <laughs> it was. Yeah. It's a beautiful it piece. Mm-hmm. You know, a couple of years. I think maybe it was two years ago. Uh, Mark came. He, he brought you. We were at a show, and he said, "Well, I got something for you." You know, how he's like, "Oh, I got something for you guys. I'll be right back." <laughs> oh yeah, that sounds just like him. What, what's he up to now? <laughs> and he came by, and he said, "Here you go." And he had this really cool, like purple, green, and just amazing wood bat frog cane. Ooh. And we we're like, wow. kind of stunned. I was like, yeah. wow, it's really, really cool. Nice. Yeah. And just out of the blue, because here it goes for you. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then when we did the Kickstarter, I guess I guess we asked him, and he said, yeah, I'll, I'll hook up something up for you guys. And yeah, that was really yeah, cool. That was great. So it went so fast. We were like, hmm, I wonder if he could do another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he has amazing work. It's really cool work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. You have. Yes, yeah, so you got to add your eye on that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're big fans of... Uh... Uh, I never thought I would actually want to uh, actively seek out buying a cane and or walking stick. Uh, but um, it was at Wicked Fair. My, the, the year it was like the, the two of them, it was Wicked mm-hmm. Fair and Voltaire's Wicked Necro Comic Con, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. I managed to find one that, that spoke to me and, uh, and I, I, joined the, I joined the club. Um, it was also <laughs> one that Mark named too. Yeah, and I can never remember the name of it. It's from the the book, <laughs> the Iron Tower, the Man Iron Mask. Uh, I can't remember. Um, hmm. I'm trying to frantically Google it's, it's it like right a, now. It's a, was a special um, driftwood. Z- or Zatara. I guess we'll yeah. ask him tomorrow. No. <laughs> from the count of right. the count of Monte Cristo. Oh. Uh, hey, Cristo. We just saw him at the Spotwood Fairy Festival last week. Yeah. Was it last weekend. And man, he has he has some amazing pieces. Yeah. He's got yeah. Yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was really cool that we could we could have that on there. You know, it's 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 interesting because I feel like um, with the Kickstarter, we haven't done one in four years, and I feel like it's actually even harder to get the word out. It's it's the there's so much, there's, people are inundated yeah. with um, with information. Facebook seems to limit. Po- 
posts. Yeah, or, yeah. It's uh, it's yep. pretty bad. The algorithm, uh, unless yeah. unless you pay them, and even when you do pay them, it seems like it's you know, not the reach you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. The algorithms are are always changing, and then even with Kickstarter, like I've noticed, even from when I did my Kickstarter two years ago, like there are significant changes to the Kickstarter format. That are mm. equally as crazy. Actually, yeah. I wanted to, as a as a fellow Kickstarter, I wanted to ask like, how many how many random messages are you getting from people that are like, oh, well, you know, like that are just like, oh, I'll boost, I'll signal boost your Kickstarter <laughs> for you if you just give me twenty bucks in this account, guaranteed funded. Totally. Yeah. 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 You know, is that a thing? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was really work. I mean, we we haven't mm. done it because we have such a an amazing fan base and. Yeah. Um, but I wish, yeah. yeah, very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't really, we haven't tried that stuff, but the, yeah. you get, like, I think within like 20 minutes that we had launched the, the Kickstarter, there was like five emails. Yeah. So yep. like, Whoa. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Like there's, cause a lot of people, like it's a whole, like, I think there's like, a, like the industry within the industry of people being like, Oh, well let me help you somehow. And then that's question, question Any mark. Profit? How can I make money off you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. is a shame, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I wish it wasn't so hard to get to get stuff out there, and it's and it is getting harder and harder because mm -hmm. even with emails, you know, yeah. it's like people's inboxes are so inundated, inundated too. Yeah, yep. that, um, you know, it's 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 kind of tough. But mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, yeah. I mean, every every bit helps. You know, when people let people know that the Kickstarter is running and share it on on Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's the only place you can really share it. Really? Well, Instagram, yeah. like yeah, like yeah. Instagram, yeah. if you have the right thing to to, yes. to repost and all that. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or you can you can uh, 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 get a couple people to to get off your backs and and do their podcast. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> fine. We'll do it. Jeez, God, leave us alone. Stop dude. asking. <laughs> and uh, and maybe a couple more people because there's like I said, you got twelve days left. Um, yeah, it, we'll put it at May 24th, 6 p.m. is when the Kickstarter ends. Um, yeah. It's currently sitting at, uh, I don't know, percentages, almost percent. There's almost percent. Um, less than $1,000 to go on the Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. 90%. I really want to put that stretch goal for the other music. I yeah. think people yeah, love I it. Yeah, I want that too. That would be so. amazing. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> one of the, like, actually, and not to backtrack, and I'll, I want to bring it right back to the Kickstarter after, but one of the things that I really admire about the work that uh, your discography in general is that like the versatility of your music and how it still stays true to your sound is amazing where like we, we've all seen you at conventions. Um, where like you you know you get an entire crowd of like several thousand people like up and just dancing in a circle, mm -hmm. but then at the same time you have songs like um, "Carried Away" I believe off of Bonjour yeah. Bathrog, like you have songs like that where you play that in a very quiet serene room and everyone's in tears because of how beautiful it is, <laughs> and like that's Aww. something that's very, I don't you you don't see many bands that are that are able to do that or pull that off with with how in the way that I have seen you do it on a num number of occasions. So I wanted to make sure I gave you that. That, oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, that constructive little feedback there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So because we really, of... we really write from from you know a very true place, you know. So mm. I really appreciate that. Of course, no, it, it yeah, I I love it. Like it, it's one of those things where I love every single new album that comes out that you guys come out with, and the more whoops, I just hit the mic. That's my fault. Shh, don't don't call attention to it. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no one noticed. But I thought if I okay, never mind. <laughs> but yes. Uh, going, but yes, but like, which is why, like, the offering of more music means that there's more versatility put to, for mm. me to listen to, which is that's always a big, uh, that, that's a, that's sounds very appetizing to my ears. Cool, cool. <laughs> awesome. awesome, awesome. It's it's like unlocking the um like the new game plus. Like, yo, we get new, we get like a different kind of Frenchie in the punk. So yeah. hopefully that would be really rad if we're if there was able to get funded to that level. If that was uh, eventually a, a stretch goal, mm -hmm. um, still plenty yeah. of time to throw money at uh, Frenchie and the punk, yeah. and then get uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and then get uh, sweet rewards in return. Mm -hmm. um, and then also you can actually see them live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's a very good chance because. Uh, following uh, the both of you on on the social medias mediums, you guys never stop, ever, <laughs> ever. No. It's, it's always yeah. <clears throat> here's, here's, we're doing a show here, we're doing a show here. This weekend we're doing a show, and it's like how? Because like just was it last night you last were in, night in Greenfield? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hawks and Reed Hawks and Reed Festival with Gay Mayor, right? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. 
Yeah, Brett's I, just throwing out knowledge. I'm that... super. I'm super <laughs> bummed I wasn't able to make that show. Sadly, <laughs> but yeah, like, was it? Was it? Did, how was it? If you don't mind me, it was great. Yeah. I really like that club. Um, yeah, it's, it's a cool really spot. cool. New mm-hmm. cool spot in Greenfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was cool. We do have a bunch of stuff coming up. I mean, obviously, um, the Watch City thing is tomorrow. And then we have um, we're doing some we're doing something in Woodstock I think the weekend after that we're yeah. playing Con Carolinas in nice. uh, Charlotte North Carolina, nice and and um, but one... then also in July we're doing a tour with the men the luck that will not be blamed for nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I love British. that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Actually, I know you mentioned them earlier, Scott, but I I also know that are you playing uh, the heavy metal folk fest in June in uh, Connecticut? In uh... I am. Yeah, I'll it's be actually, there. I'll actually, I'll see you there. I'm tabling my. I'm tabling there. So maybe we'll be. Uh, maybe our tables will be to, next to each other. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm doing my uh, Guitar Me of One set there. So yes. yeah, it's the Heavy Folk Fest, and that's in Wallingford. I don't remember the name of the club. Cherry Street Station, I believe. Cherry Street Station. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is, yeah, it's a good spot. Firechild Entertainment, I think, are the ones putting it on. Liz Liz Nazias from uh, Crim Song, which is a steampunk metal band. That's yep. cool people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. she's just starting off. So. Yeah, I was really excited. I'm excited. I'll see you there, including tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to seeing you, awesome. see, spoiling myself with Frenchie and the Punk over the next month. <laughs> yeah, and awesome, then, um, yeah, so we have a lot of other, like Motor City, SteamCon in Detroit. Yeah. We'll be back there. Nice. Um, in July. Big River Steam Fest in Hannibal, Missouri. We'll be there in September. Um, oh, gosh, Confluence in Pittsburgh. And let's see, what else do we have? Oh We're God. doing a thing in Salem too in August. That dark Salem thing at Kodo. Have you guys heard of that huh. event? I have. Um, I don't. I haven't learned much about it, but I, I definitely have heard of heard of it. Um, I, but I have not been able to uh, to get my magnifying glass on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> One thing so, I wanted to. Oh, go ahead. We have everything on on the website. All the the dates like Bowery Electric in New York City, Roxy Dudes in New Jersey. Cat, you know, like. Everything's on there. The the tour dates with the men are on there too. Nice. Which I believe it was based off of your recommendation that we actually got to experience the men about not be not be blamed blamed blamed, yep. Yep. blamed for nothing. Uh, the, way back was that first year at World's Fair? I think when no. it was just I think it was second. No. Was it? I can't remember because it was just a, it was two of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Man, that was uh, where some jokes that yeah, there were, <laughs> it was like, do I laugh at this? Yeah, I, I've, it's like I'm uncomfortable, but it's funny. <laughs> and then a couple year, a couple years later, not the most recent World's Fair, the one before that, it was like the whole band, yeah. and they yeah. kicked ass. They were mm, so yeah. good. And uh, as to say, they're filthy London punk. <laughs> they're they're beautiful. They're they're amazing. And um, it's one of those Great. things that I want all of my friends to see, mm-hmm. but because they are filthy London punk. <laughs> The whole London thing, yeah, uh, makes it a little bit difficult. So, hopefully, they'll. I, I think they're coming to the states. Is that the tour that you're going to be? Yeah, on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So we we booked that tour with them um, for July fourteenth, uh, through July twenty second. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're at Cafe Nine in New Haven as well on the twenty second. Some yeah. of us were at that one last year. Myself and. Uh, and our good friends Dave and Michelle made the right. made the travel down, mm-hmm. and that's where um, uh, your your guitar died. <laughs> when I, cur- I know, yeah, that, <laughs> I cursed it because <laughs> like yeah. I forgot what, how Jared, what Jared was saying about it. Um, but like we, because uh, what's for happened like a week or two before that, and me and Dave and Michelle go to this show, and like at some point we see. Samantha like sitting there with the guitar like with a knife in her hand because <laughs> because you were using that to like unscrew part of it to see if you could get inside and fix anything and like just casually yeah. sitting on stage with a knife. <laughs> just call me MacGyver. <laughs> and uh, and then like later it's on you're performing MacGruber. MacGruber. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took a picture and sent it to Jared because he could make it to that show. And Jared goes, "Why does Scott have Andrew's guitar?" <laughs> yeah. Like knew exactly whose it was. <laughs> yeah, that was Andrew's. Yeah, guitar, yeah. I, I feel I, bad. That kind of cooked the whole show for us because uh, you know it's the, the guitar I use is so specific for mm-hmm. what we do, and it's like an acoustic electric hybrid. It's, it's tuned like, differently. Tuned too. differently. You know, it's this cool Canadian guitar that I've been using for the last ten years. But yeah, it just kind of uh, 
I think we did a lot of drums that night. We probably did, yeah. <laughs> well, you did, because the line went like, we weren't going to do drums, but <laughs> we are now. <laughs> I felt I felt partly responsible because at the, the prior, the, the week before at World's Fair, because like up until then, we had seen you use exclusively, it was the, um, like the, uh, the sunburst color one. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then you would bust it out like a, a, a like a teal green one, and I was like, I remember saying to Alex, I was like, I've never seen that one before. You know, I wonder if you know, did the did the summers break? Is it what's going on? <laughs> and then the, the the next week, it's like, what did you do? <laughs> what did you do to his guitar? <laughs> you had to call Thanks it out. A lot, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually I did want to touch on it super quick before uh, we will will wrap up in a moment, but. Um, we did briefly mention Scott your solo uh, routine uh, with the guitar guitar me of one, where it's just you and the loop pedal and also sometimes um, uh, a dancer who I've seen accompany your your set a couple times. Um, oh yeah 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 yep yep. And yeah, Michelle Browner from uh, I think her her troupe is called Covalence maybe. Mm-hmm. Covalence. I think that's what. It is. Yeah. Right. Right. That's- yeah, I just remember because I'd never seen the solo show up until it was a couple years again. It's all, pretty much always World's Fair for me, but uh, a couple years ago, I think it was maybe two. I can't quite recall, but it was <clears throat> excuse me. It was Sunday, Sunday morning. It was really early and like everyone's okay. getting everyone's getting ready to head home. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was, chilly, it was chilly that day. <laughs> it was it was actually it was pretty cold. And I remember your set was was pretty early in the morning. It was just you. And I'd never seen your solo show before, so I was like, I'm going to go check this out. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting in the back. It was at the, the tent in the um, the courtyard. Uh, the courtyard. The courtyard. Yeah, the courtyard stage, which is a little more intimate than, you know, say, obviously the main stage. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, because it's, it's pretty much, it's exclusively uh, uh, audio, like, or uh, music. It's not, um, not a whole, so, I don't, yeah. there's not a whole lot of vocals, yeah. if any. Um and I just remember, like, you'll have to excuse me. This is going to sound really awkward and weird. But it was like it was like in a trance. It was incredible to watch, like, because one, being a guitarist myself, a very, <laughs> a very lackluster one. Don't let me try and fool you that I know what I'm doing. I know power chords. And, like, just know, like, seeing, you know, cause I could appreciate the playing and also what it takes to come up with, you know, things like that. I'm very bad at writing music myself, so to see that kind of stuff, it was amazing. And I remember Alex came up to me at one point, and he's like, hey, I'm going to go check out, you know, XYZ before before we head out. And it was literally just like a, yeah, whatever. Just, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to, I got a thing that I'm I'm watching. I'm just going to keep watching this thing. And it was it was great. If you if you had the opportunity not only to see, um, you know, the, the duo show, you know, Frenchie and the Punk, if you're, you happen to be at like a, you know, an event where it's either they have the opportunity to do both if it's a weekend thing or if it's just Scott or whatever, I highly recommend checking both of them out because they are equally. And it's not like, you know, Oh, if you've seen Frenchie and the punk, you've seen guitar. Me of one. No, you have not. Mm-hmm. Like it is, no. it is very different. And it's pretty um, different. Cool. I it's, appreciate that. Thank it's you, great. Man. It was, yeah. it was fantastic, man. I got to say it was, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Amazing. He, Scott has like an infinite well of, of musical compositions. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. So music is life. Yeah. It really is. I've been, you know, I've been playing music a long time, so it is definitely in the blood. <laughs> That's the best place yeah. for it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we talk to uh, performers, I always want to make sure I tell our listeners support live events. Yes. Go out, yeah. get outside, go to shows, go to events, and and support people doing things in front of you. And Absolutely. That's, that's some of yeah. the best experiences you can get. That that what that does is that it it really it it helps independent artists to continue doing what they're doing, because if independent artists, especially ones that you like and you want them to continue to do what they're doing, if they're not able to, then you're just going to be stuck with what the big machine allows you to hear. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yep. Very true. We'll be stuck with Facebook al- algorithms for the rest of our lives. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, they sound terrible. Then, you know, <laughs> uh, on the way back from the show, or on the way to the show, or the 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 day after the show, you're home and you listen to podcasts like Opinions May Vary. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, we did it. Uh, some someday someone oh. will listen. You know, and and tomorrow for the Watch City, I know the forecast doesn't look that great. Mm. You know, but it's only water. Exactly. And there are yeah. these amazing things called umbrellas. Yeah. 
and Wellington boots or whatever you call them here. <laughs> yeah. uh, Wellies. So we're all going to dress up like uh, Paddington? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, do <laughs> yeah, Jules Verne thing, and then we'll have we'll get our own little submarines and just paddle around. That'll be great. Bring your diving helmet. It, yes. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> exactly. No yeah. excuses. Support. Uh, so and, and even, like, support, go to local shows, and maybe even go to a show that you wouldn't really think that you would go to. Like, like a, a you know like I used to with World's Fair. Of course, World's Fair is not around anymore, but I w- it was not a type of show that I probably would have gone to unless someone had been like, yo, we're going to this. Let's oh, yeah. check this out. Yeah, I definitely needed a handhold but, on my first trip. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I, it ended up, I found so many things that I now am like, I, I have my orange backpack. Everyone, quote unquote, <laughs> everyone knows my orange backpack. <laughs> it's coated in patches from stuff that if I had not gone to this show, I yeah. would, I would, I wouldn't know about these things. Mm-hmm. That's and, awesome. Um, That's cool. You mentioned that. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's because it, it is. It does open open your life when you do experience other things, and that makes for a better world in general. Because that that can have a snowball effect. And mm-hmm. if other people, you know, if people were to do that, give other things a chance, mm-hmm. you know. Which is actually why I backed at the level for your Kickstarter, where I'm going to get the latest Frenchie and the Punk patch, and I'm going to add it to my accoutrement, <laughs> and that'll be really fun. Actually, I wanted to give you props. Is that a be- French word? Oui, oui. Accoutrement, oui. Oui, oui. 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 <laughs> <laughs> on peut parler français aussi, hein? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know what she just... I'm not even going to... For all I know, she said really inappropriate no, shit. I'm going to leave no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I do like the fact that one of the things that I do uh, enjoy about uh, Scott, your getup, is that you you have the metal vest, but it is a gentleman's uh, vest as well that is covered in patches. And right, I right. I always like to make a note of that. And uh, I, yeah, so thank you for noticing it. The gentleman's vest with the venom patch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As Ladies we... and gentlemen, uh, we have a behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was going to say, I'm like, yeah. sipping a little sherry, and now I'm hearing some blast beats. Yes. <laughs> I was going to as I was going to say ask ask this as a kind of a joke question, but because Frenchie the punk and you are more of the heavy metal savvy, like, do you get asked about Gojira a lot? <laughs> do you get? Yeah, I don't know. Being a, the, the, the French but, metal band, go, Gojira. Go, go, yeah, we so, haven't actually. You made me be the first. Interesting. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, go, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gojira is a really good metal band out of France, and mm-hmm. they're, like they're pretty. Yeah, they're pretty gnarly. And they actually have some kind of themes that are similar to some of the stuff you write, Samantha. That come kind of like ego or you know, like, yes. Earth, Earth conscious. Type. I can't remember what yeah. album. Yeah, they came out with an album a couple years ago, and there's this big old whale on the on the front of it. <laughs> like it was pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. That's a great band. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, really. Good. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I just assume because I know with like the heavy metal and the folk fest and stuff like that, I didn't know if that was if, if you'll run into that at all. So yeah. that's, yeah. that's just me throwing out random random thoughts in my head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and thank you by the way, Brett, for uh, supporting the Kickstarter. We appreciate that very much. Oh, of course. Awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't have missed it. I, I got that's. I mean, I got Bonjour Bat Frog and uh, an Elephant Uproar from from your Kickstarter endeavor. So I'm more than happy to uh, to, to add another notch on the belt. Awesome. <laughs> another notch on the belt or a patch on the vest yes that's what it is there, there it is, is. As, another patch on the vest yes. i like that a lot it's perfect uh i don't want to take up too much more of your time uh because i mean even though i still have a few questions because <laughs> because like i mean sneak them in there it's it's gonna end it's, it's gonna snowball <laughs> we'll just keep going and going. We'll, we'll ask him tomorrow. You know, you know yeah, what? Maybe exactly. uh, maybe we'll do we'll do a round two later on at some okay, point. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep bothering you because because uh, that you started with how you were artists and then music happened and I feel like I didn't get a feel for how much art you guys did while I was watching your music and that seemed new to me and so uh, we'll address that uh, next time at some point. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll have a to be continued. Yeah. Um, yes, because we have uh, we are a little we are pretty much out of time here. Um, again, I know you guys have a, a show to get ready for and all that jazz tomorrow. Um, I got to say thank you so much uh, for for joining us and coming on. This was it's one thing that we've been uh, uh, talking about for a long time. It's yo when we can try and get Frenchie and the Punk on because <laughs> you guys are just so interesting and kind and and talented. It's it's great. We got we honestly can't thank you enough. 
Awesome. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you very much. I know Merci. Alex Merci. and I went back and forth for like two years on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when like, you're what too... What the hell is wrong with these guys? You can't no, just that's... nail them down. <laughs> well, at least I was getting responses. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Even if it's a polite decline, it, it's, it helps to or, like be like, hey, they saw it. Cool. We're, we're going on. So, okay. We're busy. I, it's, you know... I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for just saying you're busy. Um, Brett, thanks for coming on and uh, and introducing introducing me to all of this. Hey. Um, it's been uh, it's been a hell of a good time mm -hmm. and uh, I can't wait to see what you, what do you show me next, Brett? Um, but I guess that's going to do it. Go uh, uh, support live music. Go 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 see shows, go see live things, go and buy their merch and then also support kickstarters. Uh, you got a couple days left. Up until May 24th at 6 p.m., you can check out Frenchy and the Punks Kickstarter on kickstarter.com uh, and throw some money at them, get some new music. You can also go see them uh, at live shows all across the country, everywhere, um, touring with the Mental Man I've been playing for nothing, who are also fantastic. If you can get to one of those shows, I highly recommend it. Super fun times. I'm out of breath. I guess I'm done talking. Thanks again for coming on Frenchy and the Punk. Until next time, I have been JR. I'm Alex. I'm Brett Kelly. And this is Scott the Punk. And Samantha La Francaise, Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been episode, I already lost, it's the 321. I don't even need my notes. It's the, We did the thing at the beginning. Three, yeah. two, episode 321 of Opinions by Very. <laughs>